I always wore a mask, always. I would never let anyone see what I really felt inside. Since I was two weeks old, I went to church every Sunday. So from the outside looking in, it looked like a picture perfect family, but on the inside, it was not okay. I grew up living in fear. There was anger and rage and physical attack in my home. I didn't dare to tell anyone uh, what was happening at home. A script developed in my mind that just rolled constantly. You're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're not worthy. So I began to look for acceptance outside my home. I started drinking at a young age, at 14, but the the masquerade continued through my college years. I would start the night off with a fifth of whiskey and chase it with a half a case of beer five to six nights a week. And then on Sundays, I would go to church and it was a vicious cycle. In 2001, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Shortly after I arrived, I landed my dream job. I was the event coordinator. I felt like I'd finally made it because I had an all access pass to Music City. One night, I attended a Nashville Star premiere party, and I met a guy, and he was interested in me, too. I mean, automatically, I was just so attracted to the way that he made me feel like a princess. I'd never felt that before, and so I was just willing to do anything for him. And so I took on his fast-paced party lifestyle. We went out drinking one night. We were drinking whiskey, as usual. And he looked at the door, and he said, I just wish a pretty girl would walk in. It just, it crushed me because I realized that he didn't look at me, you know, like a girlfriend, but more as a drinking buddy. I just sat there and drank more and more and more. I don't remember leaving the bar. I pulled on to um, I-65 North, but I was heading southbound. I had a head-on collision with a van, a family of three. The only thing I remember is waking up out of my blackout in the back seat of the police car. And I woke up uh, spitting glass out of my mouth. I had no injuries, but I just had a mouth full of broken glass. Both cars were totaled in the accident, but no one was injured. To say that it was a wake up call is putting it lightly. As I faced what could have been a very tragic end to a family, in me. I was so ashamed, just horrified at what had happened. But God was speaking to me in a way that I'd never known before. It was as though hitting rock bottom was the place that I had to hit in order to fully see how much he loved me. He was saying to me, I am saving you because you are worth fighting for. That's all I needed to hear my whole life. All I wanted to hear was that I love you and I want you. I just realized all of the horrible things that I've done in the past to feel loved and accepted, they were fleeting, it didn't matter. And that the only person that could feel um, that love and acceptance for me was God himself. From that point forward, everything changed. It was a huge miracle. No one knew that I had been convicted of a DUI and that I had to spend a weekend in jail. I never missed a day of work. After the accident, Jesus became my everything. I became passionate about church in a whole new way. I uh, began praying to God about how he would use me. I knew then that the mask of my life just, they fell away, that I didn't have to live a double life anymore. I found that the, the relationship that I wanted my whole life with love and acceptance and self-worth was right there for me. And it was Jesus. 